Hello again. Welcome back to Unit 3, Personal and Business Finance. Um, today we're going to look at functions of money and quickly go through what the functions of money are and how you can apply them. So, functions of money. For your exam, you're going to have to know the four different functions of money. So, the first one is unit of account, the second one is means of exchange, the third one is store of value, and the fourth one is legal tender. What you'll have to do in your exam is either be able to recall these from your memory and list them, or possibly describe one in a bit more detail. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, the first one is unit of account. This allows you to look at the value of something, basically. So um, money allows you to look at things and understand their value a lot better. Um, before money, it would have been hard to compare two items. So for example, you've got a 500ml bottle of water at 50p and a 2 litre bottle of water at 45p. You can straight away tell that the 45p one is cheaper than the 50p one. But when you break that down further, the 50p one is 10p per 100 millilitres and the 2 litre bottle is 2.25p per 100 millilitres. So it's four times cheaper to buy the 2 litre bottle and that is thanks to the unit of account. So you know that that is a cheaper item. Um, and that's the first one. Means of exchange. So basically before money you would have had to barter to buy or um, acquire a different asset than that you already had. So if I raise chickens and I needed a cow, I would exchange my chickens for a cow, which is quite straightforward. However, if the person who had the cow didn't want my chickens, then that would be quite awkward because then I'd have to trade my chickens for something that person did want and then trade that for the cow. So that's when things became complicated. Um, where money comes in is that you can swap your money for something quite easy. So for example, you could buy your lunch with your money. You can buy um, any item that you need with your money and not chickens. So that's good. So it's a means of exchange, it's a means of exchanging your money for another item. Thirdly is store of value. So this basically means that you can store your money and save it for a later date. But again, I'll go back to the chickens example. If I'm raising chickens and nobody wants to buy them, they'll die eventually um, and I'll lose my wealth and that asset. Whereas money, money doesn't die um, and I can just save it. So I can keep that money somewhere in a bank or invest it and use that at a later date or pass it down through other generations so it's a good thing to store and finally legal tender so another function of money is that it's legally recognized as a form of payment and is backed by the government so if somebody's got an item for sale and you go to exchange money for that item it's legally um, acceptable um, it's a legally acceptable form of currency that's backed by the government so if you went to go and pay for something with three chickens again I like this chicken analogy so I want to stick with it if you went to buy something for three chickens people would be well within the right to decline that purchase whereas if you go with five pound it's backed by the government it can't really stop you um, so I hope that's been a whistle stop tour of functions of money um, obviously you can play this back look at more of the wording um, just to get you to grips with it but it's pretty straightforward four functions you've got to be able to outline what they are possibly describe them um, thanks for listening